Since 2007, we've been living through an economic crisis, and therefore I think it's quite useful to understand where the crises come from in the first place. Cap the way the economy is normally presented can make it seem like a natural cycle, something where you've got um, a self-regulating system with booms and busts superimposed over that trying to reach some kind of equilibrium, with things like state interference, human interaction, acting to disrupt this. The reality is, however, that, that capitalism is incredibly dynamic um, and riven with internal contradictions. And what I want to explain is how these contradictions mean that crises happen um, in the first place. As ex was explained in Michael's video earlier, where profits come from and, and capitalism is through the extraction of surplus value. That is the difference between the value of what people um, produce and what they're paid for for, for doing that work. Um, that's where profits come from under capitalism, through exploitation, not from raw machinery or raw materials. Individual capitalists don't exist in isolation from one another. Capitalism is a system that's based on market competition. Capitalists have to compete with one another to be able to um, survive. Imagine if I'm a sock maker, a uh, manufacturer. I have to make my socks cheaper than other people's socks to produce. I have to compete with other sock manufacturers in the sock market. One way to compete is by investing a certain portion of the profits, the surplus value, back into the um, production process, in a process called um, accumulation, by buying new and better ways to produce socks. So imagine in my sock business we've been hand knitting socks. This is quite a time consuming process. In each pair of socks is three hours of labour. To keep the numbers simple, I'll say that one hour of labour is worth one pound. In each pair of socks, which is worth three pounds, there is one pound, which is the value of the knitting needles, um, one pound, which is the value of the yarn, and then fifth, one pound, which is living labour, 50p of which is um, wages, and 50p of which is the profit, the surplus value. And this goes up to make a pair of socks, which is worth three pounds. Now suppose I decide to invest in a knitting machine. This means I can make socks much faster. In one hour of labour time, from a worker, instead of making one pair of socks, they can make a hundred pairs of socks. Now normally this new technology is much more expensive. I might have to invest a million pounds in a new knitting machine. But what this means is that I can get put more dead labour to work for um, the same amount of living labour, and this means that the commodities that I can produce can be produced much more cheaply. So suppose a worker works eight hours in a day. Before, when I was hand knitting the socks, in, a, in one day they could make eight pairs of socks. I'd pay them four pounds and I'd make four pounds of profit. Now with the new knitting machine, they still work eight hours, still pay them four pounds and I still get four pounds of surplus value out of them. My dead labour cost, the cost of machinery, might have doubled, but I now have got 800 pairs of socks. And so this means that the value in each pair of socks is 5p rather than three pounds. And what this means is that when I take my socks to the marketplace, everybody else is having to charge £3 for their socks because that's the value that's in them. I can charge a little bit less, which means I have an edge over the competition. Um, so I can sell my socks for £2.50 or something. And this means I hopefully, in the short term, will be able to sell more than um, my rivals. And I might even be able to sack some workers. Over time, other people obviously invest in knitting machines as well. And this will mean that the price of socks comes down to their value, which is more like 5p. Now, as a capitalist, it's not just the amount of profit that I'm interested in. If I make £100 of profit, but I've had to spend a million pounds on a new knitting machine, it's going to take me a long time to be able to get enough profit to be able to invest in another new knitting machine. What I'm interested in is the rate of profit. The rate of profit is the ratio between the surplus value that's extracted, the profit, and the constant capital plus the variable capital, so the total capital that I've put in um, in the first place. And that's where the problem comes in. When I was making socks by hand, for each worker for each day, I got four pounds of profit. My constant capital was 16 pounds, and my variable capital, the wages, was four pounds. This meant that the rate of profit was 0.2. Now with a knitting machine, my profit is still four pounds, my uh, variable capital is still four pounds, but my constant capital, the machinery, has doubled in cost. And this means that the rate of profit goes down. This is the contradiction that's at the heart of capitalism. The drive to accumulate for accumulation's sake, to produce for production's sake, to make profit for profit's sake, um, means that in the short term drive to make, pro to make profit can have consequences for the longer term drive to um, accumulate. This is what Marx called the, tendency, the law of the tendency of the rate of profit to fall. So capitalists can try and do things to restore the rates of profit. 
You can increase the rate of exploitation by cutting wages or making workers work longer and therefore increasing the surplus value. But if you do this, there's a limit to this because if you do it too much, you end up with lots of dead workers. The other thing you can do is trying to make the, um, the, the things that you use to produce things cheaper. So some of the commodities that will be made cheaper through um, increased productivity will be the means of production. But there'll always be a temptation to invest more. So what you need to what capitalists really need to try and do um, to deal with this problem is to find some way of wasting, hoarding or destroying um, value so it doesn't get reinvested back um, into the production process. Production might be cut back. The first be, it might be in one or two um, industries, some places might close completely, but it might spread. Suppliers will also be impacted. There might be unemployment, and this means that workers can't um, consume the commodities that are being produced and the crisis spreads even further. As the crisis spreads, it means those capitalists that remain can buy up the capital of those businesses, those um, capitalists driven out of business at bargain prices. It means that commodities can be bought at a fraction of their value, meaning that constant capital um, is cheap. Unemployment also, you know, getting an economic crisis can mean that can help can drive wages down, and this means that labour power also cheapens. In a crisis, large amounts of surplus value is destroyed, and what remains is shared between fewer capitalists. This destruction means that the system can restore the rate of profit or even raise it, and this means that capitalists can feel confident to invest um, once again, and therefore restore the boom conditions that you had before. From the mass unemployment of the crisis in the 1930s to the struggles that we're seeing around the world today, cap crises continue to have an impact on our lives. Through understanding the dynamics of the capitalist system, we can understand ways in which we can overthrow the system and get rid of a system based on exploitation and profit.